Good morning, Strasburg United Methodist Church. Today is Sunday, October 4th, 2020. And I'm so excited that you've joined us for online worship today. Now, we are having our regular worship services at church again. Uh, they're at 8.30, 9.30, and 10.30, and we've had a good turnout so far. Um, we do clean after every worship service, and I have some wonderful volunteers who have been helping since the beginning of August to do that. But for those of you who still aren't comfortable, we are happy that you have joined us today, and I hope this message provides you some hope. Now, we do have a few announcements that I would like to share with our worshiping community. First, our, on October 10th, 2020, this Saturday, we're going to be having our charge conference. Now, this is the annual business meeting of the church where we approve our leadership for 2021 as well as our budget. And if you would like to be a part of that meeting, uh, feel free to give me a call this week or contact the office and we'll make sure we send you a link by email so that you may join in. Secondly, um, our Compassion Cupboard, uh, which is our local food bank here in Strasburg, is uh, asking for some support again. So we are collecting stovetop stuffing or other type of box stuffing along with peanut butter. So if you have any of those items that you would like to share, um, you could drop them off at the church during our business hours, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 1.30 p.m. Or you can drop them off at church if you happen to be uh, around the area. So on Sunday morning, especially if you're going to be joining us for worship. Now, the other thing that we're doing is this Friday, October 9th, uh, there are several families in our church who will be coming to the parking lot in the back parking lot. We're going to be socially distanced. But this is a fundraiser for Family Promises Night Without a Bed. Now, homelessness comes in many forms in our county. Did you know that people who may be living with a relative can be seen as homeless by uh, most measures? That, uh, that you can understand that people who are couch surfing are seen as homeless because they are not in their own place. Well, homelessness also is found in people who sleep in cars or go and use their tents or RVs and sleep at a, at a campground and have no other support or other home. So uh, we are, are going to be trying to do some awareness about homelessness, and uh, we invite those of you who'd like to be a part of it to respond to the email that, that Rob and Christy Monahan have sent out. Um, otherwise, uh, if you'd like to give some financial support for Family Promise, uh, there are two ways to do that. You can go directly to the Family Promise website and make a donation there and just pick Team Strasburg or Team Monahan to support. Um, or if you don't want to do that, you can always send a check to the church uh, payable to Strasburg United Methodist Church with a memo section in that part of it saying, family promise, and we'll make sure we get that check to them by the end of the month. So those are my three announcements today. Um, again, you're welcome to come to worship at 8.30, 9.30, and 10.30 a.m. Um, we do encourage you to sign up online, but if you can't do that, just give me a phone call the Saturday before or tell me that you're coming, and we'll make sure that we get you uh, logged in and, and just make sure you review the health, uh, and if you have any fever or headaches or anything like that, please stay home and allow yourself to get well. So let us now join together in our opening prayer today. Will you bow with me? Holy God, maker of heaven and earth, out of your great love for the world, you sent us your beloved son, but we sent him to his death. Have mercy on us, O Lord, forgive us, renew us, restore us, so that we may be the people of your vineyard, and bear good fruit for your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I want to thank Rich Gersh uh, for sharing some of his gifts of music today, and I prepared a song for you all, so, so please enjoy the music that we are sharing today in worship. Will you please join me in singing Indescribable? From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming. the stars in the sky you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untenable awestruck we spoke to our knees as we only proclaim that you are amazing 
singing in the palm of your hand. If I could have the world and all it owns, a thousand kingdoms, a thousand thrones, if all the earth were mine to own, with wealth my only goal, I'd spend my gold on selfish things without the love that your life brings just a little bit more was all I need till life was torn from me I'd rather be in the palm of your hands though rich or poor I may be faith can't see right through the circumstance sees the forest in spite of the trees your grace provides for me if I should walk the streets no place to sleep no faith in promises you keep I'd have no way to buy my bread with a Bible for my bed I trust the one who died for me, who shed his blood to set me free. If I live my life to trust in you, your grace will see me through. I'd rather be in the palm of your hand, though rich or poor I may be. Faith can see right through the circumstance, sees the forest in spite of the trees. Your grace provides for me. love for us how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon the cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call 
out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom So will you pray with me now as we offer God thanksgiving for all the gifts that we have to share. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for all your good gifts, and above all, for the gift of knowing Christ our Savior, Strengthen us as we continue to strive for the heavenly prize that you offer, eternal and abundant life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank Cindy Wasson for playing our doxology today. And if you'd like to hear more of her music, we do invite you back to worship when you can. It is now time for our prayers for the people. Will you pray with me as we open our hearts and offer prayers for the world and those who we love and those whom we don't know? When I say the words, God of hosts, will you respond with, hear our prayer? Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. For your beloved chosen people, the vine you brought out of Egypt, God of hosts, hear our prayer. For the church of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, God of hosts, hear our prayer. For martyrs, saints, and prophets, persecuted for doing your will, God of hosts, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering through sickness or oppression, God of hosts, hear our prayer. For the coming of your kingdom, with justice and peace for all, God of hosts, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we lift up our own silent prayers right now in this time, Allow us to be able to share with you our concerns and needs. God of hosts, hear our prayer. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for your people through Christ, the vine in whom we are branches. And now with the confidence of children of God, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you sing with me the Gloria Patri? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. to God. Let us now offer a prayer for illumination as we invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our hearing of the word today. God of all wisdom, give us your word and send us your spirit so that we may know Christ. Amen. Our lesson today comes from the Paul's epistle to the Philippians chapter 3 verses 4 through 14. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss, because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or have already reached that goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the years before his death in 2003, country singer Johnny Cash was invited by the famous rock and roll music producer Rick Rubin to perform the songs that he wanted to perform. Johnny Cash was at the end of a storied and celebrated career, and he was given a chance to revisit the music that influenced him as a young man, to cover music of his own favorite artists, and reimagine songs of rock bands of the late 1990s and early 2000s. Rubin produced and published six albums of The Man in Black, doing music differently. One of the songs that has haunted me since Cash's death is a song called Hurt. Now, I encourage you to watch the official music video on YouTube that was created to go along with Johnny Cash's vocals. If you do, you, you may be haunted also. Now, the original artist who created the song did so with a vision of explaining how a drug addiction could cause someone to spiral into depression and to death and how it affected people who were left behind. He imagined a young man gripped by addiction who died too soon. Now in 2002, Johnny Cash was not a younger man dealing with addiction. Instead, he was an older man facing the reality of death after living a very successful life. The video gives us a perspective of a man looking back on his life from the fame and fortune of early years to love and loss to his own struggles with addiction and finally ending with this man singing in a broken voice in a shuttered and decaying Johnny Cash Museum. It's almost autobiographical, even though the words were not written by Johnny Cash. One of the lines of the song goes like this. You can have it all, my empire of dirt. 
The man in black sings this line while sitting at a table full of food piled up on elaborate place settings. Fame, fortune, life, every friend, Cash sings, goes away in the end. In one brief song, Johnny Cash sweeps away the illusion of fame, fortune, and acclaim that so many in our world pursue. Now, in the letter to the Philippians, Paul seems to be reflecting on life in a very similar way. In verses 4 through 6 of Philippians chapter 3, Paul outlines all the things that give him a privileged place as one of God's chosen people. He was circumcised as a child, proving that he is Jewish. He has lineage and can claim a mother and a father who are both Jewish. He even was a Pharisee, one of that group of ardent believers full of zeal who upheld the Jewish laws perfectly. From a Jewish perspective, he is perfect in the law. But then, after all of this boasting, we see a reversal in verse 6. Yet whatever gains I had, Paul writes, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. His belief in Christ as a Savior has shown him that all of the markers of being one of the chosen of God are meaningless. They are human designations that have nothing to do with faith. Paul says that all these things are like rubbish. And depending on the translation of the Greek word, it is like the things that you might find in a sewer. Paul seems to say, you can have my empire of dirt. Last week, we saw Paul's challenge to be like Christ. Paul quoted to him in making that very point, reminding the Philippians of who we ought to be as Christians. He continues that call to be like Christ in this section of the letter, while also, not so subtly, reminding the divided Philippian church of his own authority to lead them. Paul continues, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained it or have already the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Paul states that even though he is perfect, according to the outward appearances of, and Jewish expectations, he still has work to do. John Wesley was an 18th century English clergyman whose theological writings created the Methodist movement and the Methodist denominations of today. What he saw in Paul's writings, especially here in the letter of the Philippians, is the idea of moving on towards perfection as a goal of the Christian life. In fact, this idea of moving on towards perfection is so important for those of us who identify with Wesleyan theology that every pastor is asked before being ordained three questions. Number one, are you going on to perfection? Number two, do you expect to be made perfect in love in this life? And three, are you earnestly striving after it? Paul writes that, that what we are pursuing is the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Perfection, then, means that we are seeking to be who God desires us to be. One commentary I read this week described our pursuit of perfection using uh, this idea. Like a racer who leaves the starting blocks behind, we look ahead to cross the finish line. When we attain it, it ends that race, but it doesn't prevent us from racing again and again and again, trying to improve on our previous time. Even Wesley had an interesting view on perfection. He said we could attain it in life, but once we realized that we were perfect, it would be gone and we would have to start over again. Charles Wesley was also very clear in telling us that perfection as a Christian was different from the world's definition of perfection. In his 1741 sermon on Christian perfection, Wesley writes that all of us are guilty of ignorance and mistakes. In this life, we will never escape a lack of knowledge, and there will be times when our ignorance will lead us into error. 
I think it's very important for us to hear that. You see, none of us can ever be perfect also in a physical sense. We all have infirmities that keep us from that type of perfection. But what can be made perfect in our life is our knowledge of God's salvation. That's the perfection that we are striving for. When we are made perfect through grace, we have the ability to understand the depth of God's love toward us. We understand that love, and we know that it causes us to live and act in a different way in this world. Perfection in a Christian life, then, means being so full of God's love that everything else becomes secondary. Our pursuit of material possessions, attainment of professional accolades, the desire for adulation, they all become unimportant. Instead, our motivation in life is to love as God loves us. We know that we are seldom perfect. I know that I'm seldom perfect. Sometimes we get sidetracked. Sometimes we trip and fall. Sometimes we are distracted by what is going on around us. Can I hear an amen to that one? And you can say that to your screen today. 2020 certainly has presented us with many distractions. We have the pandemic, the collapse of the economy, the struggle for racial equality, the presidential election, the divisions we see even in some of our families. All of these things have demanded our attention. We get caught up in pursuing other things than God, and we end up running the wrong race. We have to remember Paul's challenge that because Christ Jesus has made us his own, that we continue to strain forward for what lies ahead. Everything else in this world, from riches to fame to power, all of it will end. Nothing is permanent, especially our achievements and our lives. For those of us who are Christian, we need to remember what prize we are pursuing. We are pursuing that call from God that leads us to love. Now, I believe that Johnny Cash was a Christian. He professed it. And like many Christians, he had an imperfect relationship with God. He famously said that he was the biggest sinner of them all, even though some of us would probably want to argue with him. But he left a legacy of song that could transform others. Now, we may not be great singers. We may, may not even be great authors. Our stories of regret and renewal may not be as dramatic as Saul on the road to Damascus, who later became Paul or of Augustine, who went from being a very worldly man to a theologian and a bishop in the early church. We may not be a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter with a great story of renewal, but we are lovers, we are friends, we are spouses, parents, children, and our lives have meaning to all to whom we are close. When we testify to the transforming power of God, we can share the love of God with all. So my encouragement to you today is to remember that we are exchanging our empire of dirt for God's kingdom. I challenge you to pursue the perfection that is the call of God in Christ Jesus. Remember that what is ahead is greater than all that we have achieved before. And remember that we are called to press on toward the goal. Remember to move on towards perfection in this life, and believe that God will help you attain it. Amen. Now will you please hear this benediction? May the face of God shine on you so that you may be saved, and may the grace of God live within you through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today in worship. And I will be re re beginning again our devotion. I took a week off. I really needed it. Um, and I thank you for all your prayers and for your comments and emails. Um, I'm doing okay. Just uh, just feel a little bit down and a little bit overwhelmed by everything. Like I said, sometimes we get distracted from the race that God is calling us to run. So may God bless you today and have a wonderful day.